Are you ready to learn Google Analytics? You're in the right place. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started with the latest version of Google Analytics, which is Google Analytics 4 or GA4 for short. You'll learn how to create an account and property, use your reports, and about the different configuration options. I'll also include extra tips along the way. If you're setting up Google Analytics for the first time, then you'll need to begin by creating a Google Analytics account. Or if you're already using Google Analytics, you can log into your existing account and create a new GA4 property. We're going to cover both of these options. Let's start by heading to the Google Marketing Platform site. This is the Google Marketing Platform site. You can find it by navigating to marketingplatform.google.com. I've also included a link in the description below this video. This is where you can sign up for Google Analytics. To do this, let's hover over for Small Businesses and select Analytics. Then on the top right corner, we can see there are two options. If you already have a Google Analytics account, then you can sign in. So you can click this option to then access your existing Google Analytics account. Or if you're just getting started for the first time, then we can click Get Started Today to create your account. Since I already have a Google Analytics account, I'm going to select Sign In to Analytics. Now we need to log in using our Google account. This can be your Gmail address, your Google Workspace address, or the login details you use to access other Google products. Since I already have an account, we can see we're looking at the reports. If you are getting started for the first time, then you won't see these reports. You will immediately be prompted to create a new Google Analytics account. To see this, let's navigate to Admin. Then we click Create at the top and select Account. This is what you'll see if you selected Get Started Today and you are creating your first Google Analytics account. To begin, we need to name our new account. The best way to think about your Google Analytics account is it's a bit like a folder. It's going to keep things neat and tidy inside Google Analytics. So typically, you want to name your account after your business or organization. So I'm going to name my account Loves Data. But you can name your account anything you like. And if you're then asked to set up Google Analytics for another business, you can create another account whenever you need. So each business will have its own account or folder. Below the account name, we then have the data sharing options. These let you control how your data is shared. I recommend taking a moment to review these options. I'm going to disable all of these options for now so that data isn't shared. And I want to highlight that you can change these later. For example, if you need to grant Google technical support access to your account in the future. When you're happy, it's time to click Next. Now that we've named our account, which is our top level folder, the next step is to create a property. A property is typically used to report on an individual website, but you can collect data from multiple websites and apps into a single property so that everything is combined in one set of reports. This is one of the benefits of Google Analytics 4. I recommend naming the property so that it reflects the website, app, or combination of websites and apps you will be measuring. Since I'm just planning on measuring my website, I'm going to give the property the same name as my account. I'm going to name it Loves Data. And you can always change this if you need to. Next, we need to select the time zone we want to use for our reports. I suggest taking a little bit of extra care at this stage because if you decide to change the reporting time zone in the future, then you'll either see a gap or overlap in data. I'm based in Sydney, so I'm going to select Australia and then Sydney for my reporting time zone. Then we need to select the currency we want to use for our reports. I'm going to leave the currency set to US dollars for my property. 
but I suggest selecting the primary currency you use for your business or organization. I also want to highlight that the currency you select can be used for automatic currency conversion in your reports. For example, if I send a value in Australian dollars to Google Analytics and I have US dollars selected, then the Australian dollar amounts will be automatically converted to US dollars. Below the currency, you will notice it says Show Advanced Options. Clicking this lets you create a Universal Analytics property, which is the previous version of Google Analytics at the same time as the Google Analytics 4 property. I'm not sure why this option is still available since Universal Analytics stopped processing data in mid-2023, so let's leave this option disabled. And let's click Next. Now we need to tell Google about our business or organization. We need to select an industry category and the size of our business. And let's click Next. We're now asked to choose our business objectives. The selections we make here control which pre-configured reports will be added to our property. I recommend selecting the Get Baseline Reports option as this will give you a full set of reports and basically includes everything that's available in the other four options. So let's select Get Baseline Reports and then click Create. We need to agree to the terms of service for our particular country. I'm going to select Australia and accept the terms. We have now created our brand new Google Analytics account and property. And we can see the next step is to create a data stream. A data stream is used to collect data into your property and reports. And in Google Analytics 4, you can create one data stream or multiple data streams. If you're going to be measuring a single website, then you'll just have one. But if you want to measure a website, an Android app, and an iOS app, then you will have three data streams, one for each platform. So just remember, a data stream is used to send data through to Google Analytics, which will then be processed into your reports. We can choose the type of stream we want to create. Since I'm going to be measuring my website, I'm going to select Web. Now we can enter the URL of our website and name the stream. For my stream, I'm going to enter www.lovesdata.com as the URL. And I'm going to name the stream Loves Data Website. Next, we can adjust the enhanced measurement settings. Enhanced Measurement lets you automatically track a number of important actions on your website without needing to modify your implementation. It will automatically track page views, plus people scrolling pages on your website, clicks on outbound links, your website search function, forms, people watching embedded YouTube videos, and people downloading files. Enhanced Measurement is enabled by default, but you can turn it off and you can click the configuration icon to then disable or enable the actions it will automatically track. For example, if you don't want to report on people scrolling your pages, then you can disable this option. And then click Save. Then when you're happy, click Create Stream. Our data stream has now been created. Now we can see installation instructions have been loaded. You can use these to install Google Analytics on your website. Google Analytics will try to automatically identify the platform used for your website. And you can also select your platform. This provides the steps to install Google Analytics. Let's close this. Apart from using the installation instructions, you can also copy the measurement ID on the top right corner. When we add this on our website using either the Google Tag or Google Tag Manager, the measurement ID ensures that data flows into our property and our reports. In most cases, I recommend using Google Tag Manager instead of the Google Tag because it provides added flexibility. You can manage multiple tags, not just Google Analytics, using Google Tag Manager. 
And you can also configure Google Tag Manager to track a whole range of other actions and elements on your website. Now that we've covered the steps to create a new account and how to create a new Google Analytics 4 property in an existing account, we're going to start exploring our reports. Then we'll talk more about how we can install Google Analytics on our website, along with some of the configuration options. To explore the reports, we're going to use Google's demo account. So let's head to Google's Analytics Help article to access the demo. I've included a link to this page in the description below this video. To access the demo account, we just need to click on one of these links. And I want to mention that you only need to do this once. After you've clicked the link, the demo property will continue to be available when we log into Google Analytics. So let's click the Google Analytics 4 property link at the top. We're now looking at Google's demo account. This is the perfect way to explore Google Analytics and experiment with the reports you can customize. And just so you know, this property shows us data from Google's merchandise store, which sells a range of Google branded products like t-shirts, hats, and other accessories. At the top, we can see the name of the current property we're using. We can see it says GA4 Google Merch Shop. And it's in the demo account. We can click this, to then quickly switch between the different accounts and properties we have access to in Google Analytics. Okay, so we're going to stick with Google's demo. On the left, we have the main menu that lets us navigate between the different types of reports in Google Analytics. First is Home. This provides a top level summary for your website. It's also automatically personalized so it will show you reports you've recently viewed along with other automated insights. Reports lets you view pre-configured reports. This includes dedicated reports showing you how people find your website, what pages they've viewed, if they've converted, plus demographics and details about the devices they're using. Explore lets you create custom reports and you can visualize data in different ways. For example, you can create simple tables, funnel visualizations, and more. Advertising lets you view the dedicated attribution reports. This is where you can see the relationship between your different marketing channels and how they lead to conversions on your website. And finally, on the bottom left corner is admin. This lets us access additional settings for our account and property. Before we look at some of the most important reports, I want to mention that there are lots of reporting options, from the pre-configured reports to creating your own custom exploration reports. You probably won't need to use every report inside Google Analytics, so the main thing is to find and use the reports that help you the most. Okay, so we're looking at the home report. As I mentioned, this report provides a top-level overview of your website. At the top, we can see the total number of users, conversions, events, and new users. This is for the last 28 days, but we can change this by clicking the current selection and choosing a new one. Now we can see all of the metrics are updated. We can also see a trend line for the metric that is currently selected. This is showing us our user trend. And the dotted line shows us a comparison to the previous period, which is the same number of days before our currently selected date range. In the next card, we can see the total number of users that have been on our website in the last 30 minutes. Below this, we can see any reports and settings we've recently viewed. And at the bottom, we can see insights and recommendations. These can include automated insights which are based on Google's machine learning. These insights will be custom for your website and they show a predicted or forecasted range called the expected value. So you can see if there are any unexpected spikes or dips for important metrics. You also have the option of configuring custom insights based on metrics and conditions you choose. Now let's navigate to reports. We're now looking at the report snapshot, which is similar to the home report we just looked at. 
Again, we can see the number of users, new users, average engagement time, and revenue. And again, there is a card showing us the number of users that have been to the website in the last 30 minutes. Again, we can view automated insights. And then there are some additional cards that show us top level summaries. We can see the top ways new users are finding us. We can see the top marketing channels that are driving sessions. Where people are geographically located. Then we can see details about the number of active users and user retention. We can also see the top pages people are viewing based on the page titles used on the website. The different events we are collecting into Google Analytics. Conversions. And products people are purchasing. Since there is a lot of different terminology when it comes to Google Analytics, I want to mention a super handy resource I've created for you. It's my Google Analytics Glossary. I highly recommend downloading a copy if you're just getting started. I've included a link in the description below this video. Now let's navigate to real time. This report lets you view details about the people who are currently on your website. Data is processed into the reports within a few seconds. This can be useful for identifying where people are landing on your website. For example, if you're sending out an important email campaign, then you can check that people are viewing the pages you expect as they click through to your website. And each card includes a bar chart. This is read from right to left. So the current minute is on the right, and then each bar stepping to the left represents another minute contained in the last 30 minutes. We can also see the total number of users on the website in the last 30 minutes. The geographic map shows us where people are located. And scrolling down, we can see additional insights about people currently on our website. This includes how they found the website. We can see if people are being included in any audiences. We'll talk more about this later in the tutorial, but basically we can create different audience lists and we can then see the number of users matched to each list. We can also see the content people are viewing on our website, so the pages they're viewing. And we can see the events that are being collected. We can see page views, scrolls, and other events being collected. We can also see conversions and any user properties that have been collected. The other thing we can do is view granular details for individuals currently on our website. To do this, we scroll to the top and select a view user snapshot. This will randomly load a user. And we can see the different events that the user has triggered on the website. This will include page views and any other events. We can click on an individual event to view more details. We can see things like the page they viewed and details for any of the other parameters collected with the event. If you want to randomly view another user, you can click the small blue arrows at the top. This loads another user and again we can see the different events that have been collected. So we can view snapshots of individual users in the real-time report. And to exit the snapshot, you can navigate to another report or click Exit Snapshot on the right. Now let's select Acquisition and then Overview. The acquisition reports are all about how people are finding the website. On the overview report, we can see similar details that we saw on the home report and the report snapshot. We can see the number of users and new users. And again, we have the real-time card on the right. Traveling down, we can then see how new users are finding the website. So we have new users by the first user default channel group. This automatically combines the different ways people are finding the website into categories. We can modify what is presented in each card by selecting another dimension from the drop-down. For example, let's choose First User Medium. This now updates to show us the medium. 
This tells us how the message was communicated. We can see this includes CPC for people clicking through from our paid ads. Organic for people clicking through from the free search results on Google and other search engines. Referral for people clicking through from other websites. And more. There are also cards that show sessions by default channel group. And sessions coming from Google Ads campaigns. And a card showing the average lifetime value of our users. We can also use the links at the bottom of the cards to view the full report. And we can also adjust the date range used for the report. Let's scroll back to the top. And select the current date range. You can then choose from predefined ranges or choose your own custom date range. And you can use the compare option to compare two date ranges to see any changes. Let's enable compare and click Apply. We can now see if metrics have increased or decreased in the report. Now let's select the date range again. Disable the comparison and click Apply. Apart from the acquisition overview, there are also dedicated reports for user acquisition. This shows you a breakdown of metrics for the first way users found your website. You can also change the dimension for the report using the drop down. And you can add a second dimension to the report using the plus sign. For example, if you wanted to see the way people found your website combined with their landing page, then we can add landing page as a second dimension. Next, the traffic acquisition report shows you how people found your website to start each of their sessions. This report goes beyond the very first time they found your website, which we've seen in the user acquisition report. Since the report focuses on sessions, we can see more session-based metrics in the table. And just like the other report, we can change the dimension using the drop-down. The next set of reports we're going to look at are the engagement reports. These reports show you what people are doing on your website. This is where you can report on the pages people are viewing, events that are automatically collected using the enhanced measurement feature, and any other events you're sending to Google Analytics. Let's select Engagement, and then Pages and Screens. This report shows you the pages people are viewing on your website. Looking at the table, we can see pages are reported based on their URL. This is the page path dimension. And the report is ordered by the number of views, so the number of page views by default. Apart from reporting on pages, you can also get a top level summary with the overview report. And selecting events shows you all of the events that have been collected. This will include the default page view event, automatic events from the enhanced measurement feature we've discussed, and any other recommended and custom events that have been implemented on your website. We're going to talk more about events later in this tutorial, but if you're interested in a more in-depth lesson, then I recommend checking out my dedicated resources and courses. I've included links in the description below this video. And you can click on the name of an event to view a granular report. Next is the Conversions Report. This shows you the total number of conversions for the date range based on the events that have been marked as a conversion. We'll cover how to configure conversions later in the tutorial. Now let's select Monetization, and then Overview. The monetization section includes e-commerce reports, plus reports for in-app purchases and publisher ads. The overview report shows us the total revenue for the website, so the total value from all events, and the e-commerce revenue from transactions. These metrics will be the same unless you're assigning dollar values to events beyond e-commerce transactions. We can see the total number of people who've made a purchase and the total number of people who have made a purchase for the first time. These are both user-based metrics. 
we can also see the average purchase revenue per user and the top items people have purchased. We can see most of the remaining cards in Google's demo property are blank. This is because they have decided not to implement e-commerce tracking for item lists or coupons. And they're not tracking in-app purchases or publisher ads. Now let's open the e-commerce purchases report. This report provides more granular details about the items people are purchasing on the website. We can see metrics for each item by item name. And choosing the drop down lets you change the dimension used for the report. Now let's select user attributes and then overview. This report shows you a top level summary about the people viewing your website. We can see where they're geographically located by country, the cities they're located in, their gender, interests, age, and their language preference based on the settings on the device they're using. If you find that gender, interests, and age are missing in your reports, this means you haven't enabled Google Signals yet. We'll talk about Google Signals in a moment. But for your property, once you've enabled the feature, you'll be able to see these additional details for your users. Next is the Demographic Details Report. This provides a granular breakdown of metrics and we can see that the report shows us people's geographic location by country. Again, like the other reports we've seen, selecting country lets us change the report. For example, we can choose city to see the metrics broken down by city. And you might be wondering about not set. This is telling us that there are a portion of users where the city is unknown. Basically, Google Analytics has collected details about the user, but isn't able to provide this specific information we've asked for in the report. So you can think of not set as unknown in Google Analytics. Now let's select tech and then overview. The technology reports show you details about the devices people are using to view your website. Traveling down the report, we can see people's operating systems, the types of devices they're using, the browsers they're using, device categories, so desktop, tablet, and mobile, and the size of their screens. There are some cards that are blank since they're used to report on apps and we're reporting on a website. And traveling back to the top, wherever you see platform, this is showing you the type of data stream used to collect data into your reports. Since this property only has a web data stream, we can see 100% of users are associated with the web platform. If you were using Google Analytics to collect data from a website and an app, you'd see both of these under platform. And let's open the tech details report. This report is like the other detail reports we've looked at, and we can see it shows us the browsers people are using by default. And selecting the drop down lets us switch to the other available dimensions. For example, we can select device category to then see the metrics broken down by the types of devices people are using to view the website. So they're the standard pre-configured reports you'll find in Google Analytics. If you have editor or administrator access to the property, you'll also see an option at the bottom of the reporting menu that says library. This option lets you customize the menu and the reports. For Google's demo property, we don't have this option. And I also want to highlight this is why you might see slightly different reports if you're using a property that someone else has set up. Okay, let's select explore. The exploration reports let you create different custom reports and visualizations. Across the top, we can see the different types of reports we can create. We can create free form reports, which include tables or other types of charts. Funnel exploration, which lets you visualize particular steps you want people to travel through. For example, steps to complete a lead form or steps in your e-commerce checkout. Path Exploration, which lets you visualize the paths people take through your pages or other actions they take on your website. Segment Overlap, 
which lets you apply multiple segments to see if users are included in one or more of your segments. Cohort exploration, which lets you group users based on the days, weeks or months they visit your website. User lifetime, which lets you view additional lifetime user metrics. And in your own property, you will also find user exploration, which lets you drill down on individual users. This report isn't available in Google's demo property. Selecting any of these options will load a pre-configured template. So if you're getting started, then I recommend creating each one to explore the options. Now let's navigate back. We're going to create a new report from scratch in a moment. So we will be selecting blank. But before we do, I also want to mention that traveling down, you'll see any reports that you've created or that have been created by other people with access to the property. Okay, now let's create a new blank exploration report. We're going to walk through the steps to create two exploration reports. I'm going to show you how to create a report that shows you any custom campaigns that are sending people to your website. And we'll also walk through the steps to create a funnel visualization for the steps we want people to take in order to convert on our website. Let's get started. Okay, on the top left corner, we can name our report. Let's name this report campaigns. Now I'm going to change the date range. I'm going to select last 30 days and click apply. Next, we need to add the elements we want to use in the report. We can see there are options to create segments, add dimensions and add metrics. Let's click the plus sign next to dimensions. A dimension is a row of information in our report. For this report, I want to show the names of the campaigns sending traffic to the website. So let's search for campaign and I'm going to enable the session campaign dimension. There are lots more dimensions you can choose from, but we're going to keep things simple today. So let's click import. Now let's click the plus sign next to metrics and let's search for and select sessions. Total users. and conversions. Now let's click import. Now we need to add the elements to build our report. We can double click to add them or drag them. Let's drag session campaign under rows. And let's drag total users, sessions and conversions under values. We can see that the first rows aren't for campaigns. So direct, not set and organic. We need to remove these. To do this, we're going to add a filter to our report. Let's scroll to the bottom of the second column. Select filters and choose session campaign. Now let's choose does not match regex, which lets us enter a regular expression. This is more advanced, but just copy what I'm about to enter and you'll be fine. And if you'd like to learn more about regular expressions, then check out the extra resources below this video. Now I want you to enter caret backslash open parenthesis full stop asterisk, backslash, close parenthesis, dollar sign. This will exclude any campaigns that start and end with a parenthesis. Now let's click apply. We've now created a report that only includes our campaigns. Great work. Now we're going to create one more exploration report. So let's navigate back. and create another blank report. Let's name the report conversion funnel. Adjust the date range. And this time let's select free form at the top of the second column and change this to funnel exploration. 
Now in the second column I want you to look for Steps and click the pencil icon. Now you can specify the steps you want people to complete on your website. We're going to focus on pages, but you can base your funnel on any of the events you've collected into your property. Let's name the first step Billing and Shipping. And for the condition, let's search for and select Page Location. Then we click Add Filter. I'm going to leave Contains as the match type, but you can change this to Regular Expression for more advanced matching or any of the other options. Now we're going to enter your info.html as the value. And click Apply. Now let's click Add Step. At the top of the second step we can see it says Is indirectly followed by. You can select this and change it to Is directly followed by. For example, choosing this option would mean people won't be included in the funnel if they view another page in between steps. For my funnel I don't mind if people view other pages or perform other actions, so I'm going to change this back to the default of is indirectly followed by. And on the right you can see there is an option to set a time limit, so the step needs to be viewed within a certain period of time. I'm going to leave this disabled. Now let's name the step Payment. And let's select Page Location as the condition. And we're going to add a filter. And enter payment.html and click Apply. Now let's add another step. Let's name the step Review. Let's select Page Location. And enter ReviewOrder.html and click Apply. And let's add one final step. Let's name it Checkout Complete. Select Page Location. Add a filter and enter OrderCompleted.html. And click Apply. Now let's click Apply on the top right corner. We can now see the steps we've defined and the visualization at the top shows the number of users who make it through each step. Below the visualization you can see the number of users who drop off at each step. And you can see a breakdown of metrics for the funnel in the table. You can customize your funnel report further. For example, you can enable the Make Open Funnel option, which means users can enter the funnel at any step you've defined, rather than needing to travel through the first step. And you can change from a standard funnel to a trended funnel, to see the trend for users based on the funnel step and the date range. Now that we've looked at the exploration reports, we're going to cover the advertising reports in Google Analytics. These reports let you view the relationship between your marketing channels, and they let you apply different attribution models. Let's navigate to Advertising. The Advertising Snapshot provides a top-level summary for your marketing channels. At the top you can see the channels that drove the most conversions. We can then see automated insights based on Google's machine learning. And travelling down we can see the top paths leading to conversions. Now let's open the Model Comparison Report. The report lists our marketing channels on the left. And moving to the right we can see the number of conversions and revenue for each channel. These metrics are reported twice. The first set of metrics use the last click attribution model. And the second set of metrics use the data driven attribution model. So the report allows us to compare how credit is given to our marketing touch points based on these two different models. 
On the very right of the report, we can then see the difference between the two models. So we can see the percentage increase and decrease when we compare them. And we can also change the attribution models we are comparing in the report. To do this, we can select a new model from the drop down. I'm going to leave the defaults. To use the report, we want to look for significant changes between the models. Changes that have a positive percent mean that we're potentially undervaluing the marketing channel when we use the last click model. And a negative percent tells us we're potentially overvaluing a marketing channel when we use the last click model. The next report is the Conversion Paths report. This report provides a visual representation of the marketing touch points people engage with before converting. For example, we can see some rows show us that some users engage with our organic search listings multiple times before converting. As you travel through the rows in the report, you'll also see paths that include multiple channels. This helps you understand the relationship between your channels and how they drive conversions on your website. I also want to highlight that you can customize the report by changing the dimension used for the paths. By changing the attribution model used for the report, and by choosing which conversion events are used for the table and visualization. OK, now that we've covered the reports, it's time to look at the ways we can configure Google Analytics. We're going to walk through the steps to configure conversions, create audiences, and more. Let's navigate to Admin. And let's start by selecting Events. You can also find this by selecting Data Display and then Events. This shows us all of the events that have been collected into the property. This will include events that are automatically collected like the first visit event, the page view event, and the session start event. And if you're using enhanced measurement, then additional events can also be collected automatically. This can include the click event for outbound clicks and the scroll event for people scrolling 90% of a page. Then you can also implement other events to track certain actions and details on your website. This includes the Add to Cart event and Purchase event for e-commerce transactions, along with any other events you've implemented on your website. If you have Marketer, Editor or Administrator access to Google Analytics, then the Modify event and Create event buttons will let you modify and create events. Since I'm using Google's demo property and I don't have access, I can't use these options. The Modify Event option lets you change the values used for the parameters that are sent with each event. And it also lets you change the name used for an event. And the Create Event option lets you create a new event based on an existing event in Google Analytics. That might sound strange, but we'll use this option in a moment to configure a conversion in our reports. And the other option that will be available if you have access is you'll also be able to mark individual events as conversions by clicking the switch on the right. Again, I can't do this in Google's demo account. So to cover the steps to configure a conversion inside Google Analytics, we're going to use my own demo property. Let's head to my demo property. We can now use the modify event and create event options. And we can also mark individual events as conversions. OK, so if you see the event you would like to use as a conversion and you have marketer, editor or administrator permission, you can simply click the button to enable the event as a conversion. Once enabled, every time the event is collected into Google Analytics, a conversion will also be counted in your reports. This is perfect if you wanted to track people watching videos or scrolling. But if we were to enable the page view event as a conversion, then every time someone views a page on our website, a conversion would be counted. However, this doesn't work if you only want to track a thank you page or confirmation page as a conversion in Google Analytics. 
If you want to track a specific page as a conversion like your thank you page, then you'll need to track that individual page as a unique event first. There are two ways to do this. The first option is to create a new event inside Google Analytics based on an existing event. For example, we can trigger a new event when a page view is reported for our thank you page. This is the easiest option since everything can be set up inside Google Analytics. The second option is to configure a new tag in Google Tag Manager that will send an event every time someone views the thank you page. For example, we could send an event called generate underscore lead when someone completes the form on our website. We're going to cover the first option, but if you would like to use Google Tag Manager, then I've included links to my extra resources in the description below this video. Okay, let's select create event. And now let's click create. I want to track people viewing my thank you page as a separate event, so I'm going to name my event generate underscore lead. And now we need to configure the conditions for when we want this event to be triggered. Let's leave event underscore name as the parameter. And let's also leave equals. Now let's enter page underscore view as the value. This ensures we're only matching page view events. Now let's click add condition. And we're going to enter page underscore location then contains, and let's enter thank dash you. This will mean our new event will trigger every time someone views a page on our website that has a URL containing thank dash you. Let's leave copy parameters from the source event selected. This will mean all of the parameters from the original page view event are also available in the new event when it's triggered. Now let's click create. We've now created a new event that will be triggered when someone views a page with a URL containing thank you on our website. Once someone views a page that matches our condition, you'll be able to see the events in the real-time reports within 10 to 15 minutes. However, the standard reports, including the events report we were looking at previously, typically takes 12 to 24 hours for data to show up. So if someone visits the thank you page now, I recommend checking back tomorrow to see it in your reports. Okay, let's close this. Since you won't see your new event in this report straight away, you can wait until it shows up to enable it as a conversion or you can pre-configure your event as a conversion in advance. This means that once the event is triggered, it will also be marked as a conversion. To do this, let's navigate to Conversions under Data Display. And let's click New Conversion Event. Now we need to enter the name of our conversion event exactly as we named it when it was created. Continuing our example, this would be generate underscore lead, all in lowercase. Now we can click save. Once our event is triggered, it will also be counted as a conversion. And if you're wondering, you can enable up to 30 unique events as conversions in Google Analytics. So you should have plenty of scope to track all of your important actions as conversions. Now let's navigate to audiences, which is also under Data Display. You can create audiences to report on particular groups of users. For example, you might want to use an audience to focus on users who make multiple purchases on your website, or to focus on users who haven't converted yet. Apart from using audiences to focus your reporting, audiences can also be used for remarketing in your linked Google Ads account you'll see any audiences that have already been created in the property. And if you're just getting started, you'll see two predefined audiences that are automatically available. These are all users and purchases. So all users is for everybody who has been to your website or used your app. And purchases are for people who've completed an e-commerce transaction on your website or made an in-app purchase. If you haven't sent a purchase event to your property, then this will be empty. Next is custom definitions. 
This is where you can register parameters that have been sent with events as either custom dimensions or custom metrics to use in your reports. As we've seen in the standard reports and the exploration reports, there are lots of default metrics and dimensions that are automatically available in Google Analytics. If you want to add your own custom metrics and dimensions to your reports, you can do this using custom definitions. Finally, in the data display section is the debug view, which lets you test your implementation to see a live view of events as you check things on your website. We'll look at this in a moment when we use Tag Assistant with Google Tag Manager. Now let's look at some of the options under Property. First, Property Details is where you can change the name of your property, check the reporting time zone, the currency used for your reports, and even move your property to another account. Property Access Management lets you control who has access to your property and account. Now let's select Data Collection and Modification. We've already talked about Data Streams, but this is where you can get the measurement ID and tracking code to add to your website. Data Collection is where you enable Google Signals. This is the feature you'll need to enable to see age, gender and interests in your reports. You'll also need to enable this to use audiences in your linked Google Ads account. Data retention lets you set how long to keep user identifiable data in your reports. You can choose between 2 and 14 months. Data filters is where you can configure a filter to exclude your internal traffic from reports. There are additional settings and options you can use with your property. One important option I want to highlight is the Product Links option. This is where you can link Google Ads, Google Search Console and other Google products. I definitely recommend taking the time to link Google Ads and Google Search Console for additional reports and insights in Google Analytics. We've now covered how to create an account, we've walked through the reports, and we've looked at some of the most important configuration options. Now I'm going to show you how to add Google Analytics to your website. To install Google Analytics on your website, I generally recommend using Google Tag Manager since it provides additional flexibility. To do this, you'll need to get the measurement ID for your data stream. So let's select Data Collection and Modification, and then Data Streams. Then we select the data stream we created at the start of the tutorial. Now we just need to copy the measurement ID on the top right corner, and head to Google Tag Manager. Let's create a new tag. Let's name the tag Google Tag GA4 Page View. and let's select Tag Configuration. Now we need to choose Google Tag as the tag type, and let's click the variable icon under Tag ID. Now let's click the plus sign on the top right corner. Let's name the variable GA4 Measurement ID. And let's select Variable Configuration. Now let's select Constant, and paste our measurement ID as the value. Now let's click Save. By creating a variable like we've done, it means we can easily reuse our measurement ID in multiple tags. Now we need to select Triggering, and select the Initialization All Pages Trigger. This will mean that the GA4 tag is added to all of the pages of our website and it will fire before other tags. Now we can save the tag. And let's click Preview. Enter the URL of our website. And click Connect. We can see Google Tag Assistant has loaded. 
and we can navigate through our website and complete any actions we're tracking using Google Tag Manager. Now let's select the Tag Assistant tab. And we can see that our GA4 tag has been fired. Now let's head to Google Analytics and open the Debug view. We can now see the events that have been collected using Tag Assistant. When you're happy that everything is working, you can head back to Google Tag Manager and publish the changes to your live website. You will then be collecting data into Google Analytics 4. So that's how you can start using Google Analytics 4. We've covered how to create an account and property, we've walked through the reports and looked at the different configuration and customization options in Google Analytics. If you'd like to learn even more about Google Analytics, then please take a moment to check out the extra resources, other tutorials, and my courses. You can find all of the links in the description below this video. And to stay up to date and learn even more about Google Analytics, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.